Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. I hope you're encouraged this morning as we sing and worship together.
high would I climb mountains if the mountains were where you hide against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply cause in the highlands and the I would search and stop at nothing You're just not that hard to find And I will praise you on the mountain And I will praise you when the mountain's in my way You're the summit where my feet are So I will praise you
Hi, Pastor Daryl here, Pastor Ashley. We're glad you're joining us today at Faith Online. It is Memorial Weekend, and we just want to honor those who died in service. And if you are a family member of those members watching, we are so grateful for their service. Um, and we're just glad you're here celebrating with us this weekend. Yeah, it's kind of a different Memorial Day weekend, isn't it? We don't get to go camping and so you know, picnics maybe or whatever, but we're glad you're here. And you're in for a treat today in the message. But before we do that, I want to mention the online giving tab. Depends on which platform you're on, what it looks like, but you'll find it there. But I want to just say, you know, here at Faith, it's been fun to see how people are so generous in giving. Just today, we helped two families, two single moms with six kids, and uh, I put the word out on Facebook that we need to help some families with some food. And I honestly, within a couple of hours, we had piles of food on the front porch and today our teams are delivering to them. It's just awesome to be a part of such a generous church. Thank you for your generosity, and thank you for giving, even in this weird time of pandemic. And so God bless you. Hey, enjoy the message today. Hey, we're so pumped to be here again online. And man, it is uh, so cool that we're able to do church online. As soon as we think we've got everything figured out for the church online, we find out another thing that we have to figure out with the gear. So this has been a super fun journey. I'm glad that you're here with us today. Um, God is good. We are talking about Romans chapter 8. And it's a short series that we've been talking on uh, about the, the message of identity. And the title of the series is, Who Do You Think you are. So go ahead. If you are with your spouse, you've probably already said this this week to them. So just turn to them right now and say, who do you think you are? And then keep watching. I'm Darius. I'm the youth pastor here at Faith Tri-Cities. And this week, I'm celebrating my fifth year completely here at Faith for five years. So that's really exciting for me. I love being a part of this church. Um, we're going to jump into this. The The message portion of Romans chapter 8 that we are looking at today is Romans chapter 8 verses 17 through 30. So that's a big chunk of the Bible. And if you've read through this chapter ever, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of stuff in it. We're literally going to camp out at the very end of this passage. Romans chapter 8 verse 30. 30. And it's like kind of a really great summary of the whole passage. So you can go ahead, if you've got your uh, Bible out or a Bible app out, you can look at that. You'll also be able to follow along with it here. Uh, I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, verse 30 to you really quick, and then we're going to jump into this, who do you think you are <laughs> message. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 30. And it says, and who he predestined, he also called. And who he called, he also justified. And who he justified, he also glorified. And so we're just going to camp out there. There's a lot of really good stuff packed into that. Again, we're talking about who do you think you are. Um, I have a name. You've probably heard that before. I have a name. And my name is, um, to me even, an interesting subject. My name is Darius Rodney Trevor Giles. So I've got two middle names. If you're a two middle name person, let us know in the comment section right now while you're watching. I'd love to know if there's more weirdos like me here at the church that have two middle names. Uh, my wife is also a two middle name person. You know, two middle name people, we're just like magnets. We find each other wherever we are in the world and we stick together. Um, my name is Darius Rodney Trevor Giles. And you don't really have to like do a lot of thinking when you look at me to wonder who would name a kid that looks like this a name that sounds like Darius? I don't really fit like my first name. As a matter of fact, if I go somewhere and I'm like invited to speak at another venue and people hear my name, they are oftentimes at least surprised, if not disappointed, <laughs> when I show up. Because honestly, they're expecting someone who might look a little bit different. My name, it doesn't really match me. It's a surprise. And uh, it, it almost even like, seems like it was a mistake. I've got two middle names because my mom and my dad couldn't agree on what to name me. And so my mom wanted to name me, I love my mom, bless her heart, but she wanted to name me the most boring name of all time. Uh, she wanted to name me John Trevor Giles. Now, if you're watching this and your name is John Trevor, um, 
I'm not trying to offend you. Also, I'm praying for you. Uh, my dad wanted to add the name Darius and Rodney, and so he did that without asking my mom. That's the story. Uh, the only time I ever heard my full name called, though, as a kid was, I mean, you probably have had this experience, maybe when I was a kid and I did not come home in time or I did something really awful, I would all of a sudden, the only time I would ever hear this is I would hear my mom go, Darius Rodney Trevor Giles. And I knew if like the full name got called that my mom meant business, that she was serious, that she had something really serious that she wanted to say to me. Uh, my parents actually called me Trevor growing up because, again, my mom picked that name. So, I mean, who do you think won that argument? So they called me Trevor, but I started going by Darius in school. I just think names are an interesting thing. Uh, if you could hang in here with me, what I'm saying is a name is important. In Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it says, And who God predestined, who he planned, he also called. And who he called, he also justified. And who he justified, he also glorified. And I was like trying to get into this scripture uh, as I got ready for this message. And I like really thought I was way cooler than I am. Because I got into it and I started reading background on the Greek from the New Testament. And what do these words mean? Thinking, um, you know, I'm so good at biblical research. I'm going to find some kind of gem that's really just going to make this, just going to turn this whole message on its head. And I'm going to say something that's going to be really profound. And what I found was... There's not really any of that. In this verse, it's extremely straightforward. Pretty much right the way it sounds is the way it is. What is interesting is this word called is a word that I think I, because of who I am and because of my faults, I get tripped up with this word called. Because in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 17 through 30, the, the Bible's talking in this, this portion of Scripture about what it means to be with God and how do you know if you belong to God. And, and it says it's a mystery, and, and there's a part of us that's groaning and, and hurting and wishing that we saw more of the truth and fullness of our identity in God. And then it goes on to say that God's spirit, it, it brings that truth out in us. It says it testifies in us and it will even pray for us. And God's spirit, he, his spirit in us, he will pray for us and tell us our identity. And it ends, he, he ends this, this portion by reminding us, but remember you were planned by God. And if you were planned by God, you are also called by God. And that word there is specific because that is not a, a, a word like I would think that means like he sent out a call. You know, like when you post on Facebook, hey, anybody want to come to a barbecue in nine weeks when quarantine's over? Anybody want to anybody buy my, my old skateboard? It's not like that kind of calling like a general thing. This word call is God saying, who I predestined and planned, I called by name. It's a specific calling by name term that God's using. And I just wanted to encourage you with this from Romans 8 verse 30, that you're being called by God. My name might sound like a mistake, but God had a plan for it. You know what the name Darius means? This is the most ironic part. My dad picked the name Darius. I love my dad. This is kind of his personality. He picked the name Darius because it means rich and powerful ruler. So when I was 17 and I told my dad I wanted to be a youth pastor, he was like, well, that was a waste of a name. <laughs> rich and powerful ruler. But you know what? God's naming of us, and not just our, our names, but God's planning and calling of us was not a mistake. You are not in the place you are today by mistake. You may not have planned it. Someone else may not have planned it. Your circumstances may not have planned it, but God didn't do it by accident. He predestined it. And not only did he predestine you for where you are, the season you're in, and what's going on in your life, he's calling you by name. God's call to us is not a general, yes, we need to be good. Yes, we need to go to church. It's not a general call to come and be around God. He's saying to each and every person, Ashley, I know you by name. Micah, I know you by name. Daryl, I know you by name. Brittany, Matt, Kaylee, Eric, Manny, I know you by name, and I'm calling you specifically 
to be a part of my family. You are not called to God. You're not called to God in obscurity. You're called by identity. He knows your name. The call to be identified in God is not the call to be identified by your work. It's not a call to be identified by what you've done. It's a call to be identified by the Father that loves us. I'm identified by God as Darius Rodney Trevor Giles. More importantly, by that name, as a son of God. And so in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it begins by telling us we're planned and we're called by name. And then then the next thing that it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it says you're predestined and you are called. You're called, and it says who he calls, he also will justify. Um, I had an uncomfortable experience when I first started dating my wife because I grew up with pretty much all dudes. So my just general understanding of the opposite sex was like on a scale of one to 10 at negative two. I had two brothers and my dad and my mom in the house that I grew up in. And my gracious mom pretty much just dealt with all the crazy testosterone stuff. And so when I started dating my, my, my now wife, she was the first girl I ever dated, which makes me sound kind of crazy, but also brutally romantic, you have to admit. And so when I started dating my now wife, then girlfriend Brittany, she would talk to me in ways that I, I did not comprehend. And she would say things that were very like st- strong and emotive. And I was like unfamiliar with this kind of language because in my house growing up, even though we were a very emotionally charged family, we were also very like literal and logical brained. Like you told someone what you thought of them based on what you thought of them and not anything else. And you held them accountable to every tiny mistake they'd ever made in their past and you called them to the mat on everything. So there was no like embellishing how much you loved someone. (laughs) And when I started dating my wife, she started saying this to me and I'm not saying it was the right thing to say. I'm not saying it was the wrong thing to say. Look, I I don't know. I'm not good at relationships. But what she said that I was so like weirded out by is she would say, you know what? You are perfect. And I was like, you in my head are crazy. I'm not perfect. There's no, and I was like, I was like, that's a, okay, thanks. That's a lot. That's a lot to live up to. That's kind of a, that's kind of a very high standard to set. Like, what, where do we go from here? You were calling me perfect. And it's a really funny thing because, because now there are times where I will look at my wife. Well, in June, we will have been dating for, my math is bad, I think 13 years in June. And sometimes now I'll look at my wife and I'll say, you know what? I just think that you are perfect right now in this moment. Now, it's not true that she is perfect. It definitely wasn't true that I was perfect when I was 16 and we started dating. However, it's just a reminder to me that when you are in relationship with someone, in your best moments, you don't call them by what they've done or by what they're identified by. You call them by what you see them as. In your best moments in relationship with someone, you identify them by how you feel about them and what you know to be good about them. And I love this about Jesus. This word justified in Romans 8 verse 30, it literally is the word that means to make someone in good standing. It it doesn't mean as much to make someone become just, like begin to act justly. It really is the term justified. God is saying, who I planned, I called by name. And the people that I called by name, I called them by name and I called them right in my eyes. I just, I just want to camp on that for a second and then we'll move on because I want to encourage you. You are not called by you, you are called by God. You are not perfect. The same way I'm not and my wife is not. You have made mistakes. You have not done all the right and you will not. But God is justifying you. What does that mean? It means bad news. If you think that you can do something 
to get you in the right place with God, you're delusional. But good news, if you think you can do anything to get out of good standing with God, if that's where he says you are, you're delusional because God's love is not based on your goodness, your reputation, your performance, your action. God's love is based on his goodness, his performance, his reputation, his action, his death, and his resurrection. What does that mean? It means that in the, in the quest of becoming who God has called us, predestined us, and justified us to be. We get to get close to God and learn to obey God, knowing that when we disobey God, we are still loved. And when we obey God, we are loved just the same. And we don't have to do it to get justified. We do it because we are justified. And the last thing that Romans 8, chapter 30, chapter 8, verse 30 says is this. It says, whom he predestined, planned, which God, I love that God planned me. He called, who he called, he justified, and who he justified, he also glorified. It's my last quick story, because I'm over time. But my wife and I sometimes will do like a, like a deep clean or like a mega clean of the main living area of the house. And, you know, it's me and my wife and um, her sister, who we love, that live with us. So there's three adults and a dog, that live, a little dog that lives in the house. And you can just, like, crew, like, a lot of junk around the house if you're not constantly picking stuff up. So every once in a while, all of a sudden, we, just, we want to get all the, anything that's not in a perfect place needs to get fixed. And it's funny because I don't do well with messes. I don't do well with messes. I made slime yesterday. Uh, like, you know, like little kids do. I'm a youth pastor. What can you say? I made slime yesterday, and I have to, like, add enough solution to the slime to make it, like, not goopy because I don't like it getting stuck to my head. I don't, I don't do well with messes. My wife, when we start cleaning, we have a countertop. It's right inside our door, and she loves to do this. Brittany loves to take all of the mess and make a uber mess on top of the counter, it's like if you were ever a kid and you watched Power Rangers and they all take their zords and they make a mega zord. If you don't know what that means, I'm sorry. But like she does, she takes all the mess and makes a mega mess and puts it on the counter. And it's just this huge, like just this huge pile on the counter. And I get so uncomfortable because I think, look, if we're making a mess on the counter, we're not getting things clean. The counter needs to stay clean during the cleaning. And sometimes I think the mess on the counter is proof that the cleaning isn't happening. And what's, what's really funny is sometimes God makes a mess in your life to begin to clean up what's under it. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes the mess of life is God revealing what's hidden because he's healing what's under it. Revealing the mess because he's healing the person. And so at the end of Romans chapter 8, verse 30, in this whole section, talking about how do we know that we belong to God? Well, we know because God's planned us and he's called us. Listen, today, if you're watching this, you belong to God. If you're saying right now that you don't want to belong to God, God's inviting you to belong to him. He's inviting you to be loved by him. He's inviting you to be cared for by him. And for the rest of us, if we're questioning, oh, do I still belong to God? Let me tell you, you don't belong to God because of your worst day. You belong to God because of his worst day on the cross and his best day in the resurrection. You belong to God. And so he's glorifying you. You're getting better. And right now, maybe there's a mess in your life. That mess is the process of God healing what's under it. Maybe you're facing 
Maybe you're facing something you don't want to share with somebody. Maybe you're going through divorce. Maybe you're going through separation. Maybe you're going through loneliness. Maybe you're still single and you can't understand why you feel like you're a mess. And if you were put together, you'd have another person like all the other persons. Can I tell you, the mess is not the problem. It's the process. God is glorifying you. The word glorified means to be lifted up, to be changed, to be brought to a better place. And at the end of the road of glory, there's something really, really beautiful looking. And that's heaven. But on the road of glory, there's a beautiful mess of redemption, reconciliation, and healing. And so today, here's the, the declaration that I want to make. I belong to Jesus. I'm predestined, called, justified, and glorified. And the question that I have is, Jesus, in the mess in front of me, how do I lean in to your healing and know that my mess doesn't mean I'm being condemned. My mess doesn't mean I'm left behind. My mess means that God is healing, revealing, and transforming. In Jesus' name, I just pray that right now, wherever you're at, whether you are five years old or you are 95 years old, that you can declare that I belong to Jesus and lean into that question, God, what are you doing right now? And how can I lean into the mess because you're making something new out of it in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, what a great message, huh? So you know, good. God calls, I love that idea. He calls us to something. And uh, not just a general, but he calls us to be who he wants us to be. And I hope you're finding that in your own life. Hey, we, I know it's easy to be disconnected at a time like this and to feel that way. One of the ways we want you to be connected is to fill out that Connect card. Would you do that for us? Helps us in a couple of ways. One is it lets us know who's here online, but also it helps us to know how we can pray for you, any needs that you might have. And if you've responded to Christ today, to give us that information as well. Just check the box. And uh, let us know that we'll get back with you. Yes. And another way to stay plugged in and just get some daily encouragement. If you like us on Faith Tri-Cities um, on Facebook, we have daily encouragement videos that go up. And they'll just show up in your feed. So make sure to give us a like and get that daily encouragement that we and I need. love those, don't you? They're so good. Yeah, hey, God bless you again. <laughs> Thanks for being with us this weekend of faith. See you next week.